Hello, Search here from the Backyard Driving Range. We have a question that came in to customer service. This one comes from Dr. Bill. Dr. Bill seems, uh, says, Our ass, I seem to have a problem with my turn. If I swing, I seem to turn before I reach my ball, but if I don't turn, I lose power. Dr. Bill. Okay, now, I think the turn he's talking about is, is, the, is in his forward upswing. He sounds like he's turning in the, from the forward upswing. All right, so let's discuss that. First off, let's just see, is if I'm reading him correctly, he says when he turns, he, if he turns before he reaches the ball, if he doesn't turn, he loses power. All right, so when he turns, which is basically a rotational movement. When they get back up here and make a big turn, a uh, backswing turn, they have to turn hard to get the club from way behind them over here out to the front where they can go down to the ball now. And so when you do that, anytime you start your downswing with a turn, or as we call it the forward upswing, the turning will automatically start pulling your body forward ahead of the ball. All right, that's why we see a lot of, a lot of rotational players, they have to do, they, 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 they scrunch their spine down a little bit going through because they're slowing their turn down so that they, they don't get too far ahead of the ball, which if they get too far ahead, they're gonna hit the ball quite to the right. That's why they have what I call lag drag hold block. As they come down and they've turned ahead, they, they tend to arch their wrists like this and, and, and arching their wrists. See, if the club's here and you arch your wrist, it keeps, it pulls the club back behind the ball. See this, if this is my ball, if I'm coming down and I've turned ahead of the ball and I get here, if I arch my wrist, it, it, helps, it helps pull the club back to stay a little bit more on top of the ball as I like to see it and not come from outside in as much. And it gives them a better chance of somewhat hitting the ball straight with a little bit of a cut action. But one little tweak off, club face a little open or whatever, and you're, hitting port, you're gonna start hitting balls with a lot of dispersion and not quite so solid. The other issue there is, is the, the most dynamically balanced position is, is your hands are, are, is flat, like you, raise, you put your hands out to shake hands, all right? As soon as you cup, you've taken your hands, your, the, 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 the hands, the wrist, the forearms, and the, and, and the whole arm out of balance, and you've broken down. You've changed the length of your muscles, which is also, in that case, would be if you cup or you arch, your, your lift, your, the muscles are, are pulling, are shortening, and they're pulling the, the club up closer to the body, which means you could affect, you either have to go down more, change your spine angle, your knee angle, whatever, go down more to hit the ball, and you go down one little bit too much, you chunk it, come out, don't go down far enough, and you can start thinning them. So it's changing a major angle, okay? And what's our first secret? Fewer angles, the better. And so the key is, 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 so uh, Doc is realizing, uh, Dr. Bill's realizing that, that getting ahead of the ball is causing, he hits the ball maybe farther, but I think he's implying that, that he's having issues, very likely directional problems and consistency in ball striking, hitting it solid, thins or chunks or whatever. And, but when he tries to stay still, as, as we talk about, we just make a lateral, uh, uh, when we get to the top, we have the little lateral shift, which causes a secondary spine angle, which, which helps pull the club down. And at impact, we're coming into the ball where we're behind the ball at impact. But, he, but he's implying he loses power when he keeps his body that much still and, and, and more centered. And that's because you have to understand the concept differences between the rotational swing and the peak performance swing. Rotational is primarily getting its power by turning the body fast and using the body to pull the arms. We're just the opposite. We're, doing, we're getting our power from centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is that law that if I had a rock hanging from my hand here on a string and I, I flip the rock up in motion and I start swinging the rock faster and faster to where we could, we could probably actually hear it whizzing, you're gonna see that my hand moves less and less. We also know that, that when I'm swinging it as fast as I can swing it, that rock's going straight up and down. If I were to start tilting my hand upward and make the rock go from swinging this way to swinging more this way, diagonally, all right, what's gonna happen? I need to add more energy to keep that rock going. Why? Why do I have to more, add more energy to keep the rock going in a constant orbit? One, two, three, four, five, got the answer? Gravity. Once you start tilting it, and tilting it from 
a perfect 90 degrees, you are putting it out of harmony with gravity, where gravity wants to grab it and pull it down. Okay? And so, when you're in harmony with gravity, swinging vertical, right, like we swing the vertical swing, we're in harmony with gravity. Gravity is helping us. It's our ally. It is not hurting us and being our enemy, making the club, the club bed, the rock heavier. Right? The symbolism here is the club head's the rock, the shaft in your arm, your arms are the uh, lead arm, is the, is, the, is the rock, is the string from takeaway, takeaway to impact, and then the, the trailing arm, the back arm, the right arm for right-handers, becomes the string all the way up to the finish. Okay? So, we get our, we get our power by keeping our body more still and doing what? Swinging our arms faster. Alright? Centrifugal rock, centrifugal force. The rock is the head and the shaft, and the hand is your body. All right. So when we want to hit a ball faster, or hit a ball longer, I should say, or at least hit it, it with good force, good energy, and and on a normal distance, you have to have arm acceleration. And we get arm acceleration by keeping the body quiet. We get we peak performance golf swingers get our power from centrifugal force, not torso rotation. Torso rotation has everything moving. And what is the first, the first secret or rule of the peak performance setup and swing? Fewer angles, the better. Set up in good angles and then maintain them. So we get our speed, we get our speed by having a good setup so that we can keep the body quiet and accelerate the arms. DJ once gave the best statement I ever heard. One of my students said, DJ, what do you do when you want to hit the ball farther? And he asked this when DJ was standing over a shot, just ready to pull the trigger on the range. And, and, and DJ just looked up, he had the ball here, he was just about to pull the trigger, and again the student said, DJ, what do you do when you want to hit the ball farther or hotter? He pulled, he just stood up like this and he said, I hold my knees more and I swing my arms faster that way, that way pointing to the target. That is the ultimate secret to power, that is how we get our power. We're the, the body's the hand, and the club head's the rock, we hold our body more so we can Swing the rock faster. Create that swoosh. Swoosh test. All right. You can hear the swoosh right there, just about exactly where the ball is. If you get it here, if you if you pull through, you don't hear anywhere near the swoosh, and you hear more of it after the ball than you do in front of it, because they're just they're just holding on. Okay. So do the swoosh test. And remember, peak performance swing. We hold our body more, our legs, as DJ said, and swing our arms faster that way. And that's how you hit it more solid straight, longer, and shoot those lower scores. That's it for the search for today, and I'll be talking to you all again soon.